Hello everyone, DM Johnny here from Dungeons and Dice, and today we're going to go over 10 uncommon magical items that will not break your game. Let's get started. Let's get it on. First item on the list, when I saw this, I was like, man, why have I not put this in my game? It's literally a flamethrower. Uh, I guess if you hand it out at level 1, it could break your game, but I'm assuming you won't be handing out uncommon magic items at level 1. Let me check this out to make sure I get it right. It is called the Pyro Converger. I think this is actually a magic card, because when I googled the art for it, that's what popped up. It was from like uh, Rev Guildmaster's Guide to Ravenica. And basically, this it's only a 10 foot cone, so it's got like the square and then two squares. And it's a DC 13 deck save, or they take 4d6 fire damage. Now, this thing basically, what you do every time you use it, you roll a d10. And then you add the number of times you use it to the roll. If it reaches over 11, it malfunctions until the next long rest and you actually take damage. So let's say you've used it twice and you roll a, a 10 when you roll your d10, that's 12. It'll actually harm you. But I mean, come on, it's a flamethrower. Big, one of my biggest purchasing regrets in my life is the fact that I didn't buy the flamethrower that Elon Musk sold. Number two, Blood Weapon. This is from Curse of Strahd. It's the Blood Spear, technically. I think that's actually a plus two. Don't do that. Do plus one or just normal. And what this is basically, when a PC gets a kill, they roll 2d6, make this once per day, they get that as temp HP. That's it. If you let them do it unlimited, what they're going to do is go killing a bunch of squirrels and stuff and just get 12 temp HP. Number three is the Terror Shield. I don't have an actual shield, but this basically has the face of a beast, like an owl bear, dragon, whatever, something scary. And as a bonus action, you can hold it out and use the command word to make it do a DC 13 wisdom check to creatures within, oh, what is it? Within 15 feet, and if they fail the check, they are frightened. That's it. You can only use this once per day, and then of course the guys can make a save at the end of each of their turns if they do get frightened. That's a homebrew item, by the way. I don't know why I didn't start with that. If you like homebrew items, you should go check out our Patreon. One dollar a month, you get like 50 of them. So yeah, go check that out. Number four is the Robe of Serpents. Let me make sure I got this one right, yes. So the robe has 1d4 plus three. As a DM, you might want to pick, or you can have them roll up to you serpents on it. So let's assume this parrot was a serpent. What you can do with it, I can't actually do this, but you take it off and you throw it and it becomes uh, not the strong snake, not the constrictor one, giant poisonous snake. Still decently strong, but not game breaking. Now granted, if they throw all five of these out, yeah, it could be a bit much, but after an hour they do disappear and that's it. They don't re, re get up on your robe, like it's just a normal robe after all the snakes are done. So this is potentially, what is it, seven po giant poisonous snakes? Not too bad. Number five is like one of the most expensive, awesome weapons in the game, armor, whatever you can get it on. It has a weapon of warning. This thing is amazing, right? No, actually it's not, it's a joke. I don't really get why it's like 50,000 gold in every single generator, I guess from old school D&D maybe. But basically what this does is it gives you advantage on initiative, which is good, and also prevents you from being ambushed. I don't know, if someone knows something about weapon of warning that I don't know, please let me know. But anyways, the real number five. The real number five is another one from our Zelda list, and that is the pocket bomb. As if you can't tell by now, I like fire, uh, flamethrowers, explosions, things like that. It's almost 4th of July, by the way, which, <laughs> my boat's here, I'm happy. All right, and this one is a little bit stronger than the pyro converger, but it's one and done. And basically, you pull this pocket bomb out, you throw it, they make a deck save. I think we have 13 or 14 as the number. As a DM, use your discretion. It's 4d6 fire damage in a 10-foot radius. And after that, the bomb is done. Hand a few out if you like, or just give one out as a reward. Number six, an alchemy jug. The I actually really like these things, but the one I'm talking about is the orange one. And the reason I like this one because it has soy sauce in it. Uh, and this one basically is, it's kind of more of a role play item, but it is a good way of like getting a lot of beer so people can loosen up and role play a little bit more. I like that about it, that's really awesome. It's got beer, it's got wine, it's got water, um, salt water, mayonnaise, soy sauce. Like I said, the orange one's got soy sauce. Oil and honey, vinegar as well, that's pretty cool. You can basically pour the, pull the cork off of one of these things and then pour a certain amount, I'll have the list up. It's not a crazy amount and you can only pick one per day, but it's a fun item to hand out to see what your players will do with it. It's like the uh, immovable rod. You hand one out and your players don't do anything and you're like, okay, cool. Then you hand two out and suddenly they're doing something you didn't expect and it's all over. Number seven is going to be another homebrew item and this is the Goblet of Endless Bounty. Yes, uh, this one as a DM, I would kind of tailor it more 
towards whoever is getting it. But the way we have it written is basically you get to take a drink out of this and you gain temp HP, temp HP, uh, equal to your level plus your charisma modifier. As I said, I would maybe adjust this depending on like if the fighter's more con based. That would work great for a paladin if that's your frontliner, maybe even like strength if it's a barbarian. It's temp HP once per day. You know I like temp HP. A little bit more of it in the game would not hurt. Also let your players get a little bit more reckless, which I like. Number eight is a really simple one. Uh, we don't give a lot of bow love here, but this is just the braces of archery. Yeah, someone's get plus two to all their longbow and short, board, short bow damage, but it's only plus two damage. It does add up eventually, I get that, but this is something you can hand out early. And your player will probably, if you have a ranger or a ranged rogue or even a ranged blood hunter, something like that, it's something they can hang on to and probably use for at least three, four, maybe even five levels. Number nine, Boots of Shifting Luck. This one basically you roll a d20 and you call it. Odds or evens. You get it right, congratulations, you have advantage. You get it wrong, you get disadvantage on your next uh, ability check, basically. I would probably give this one like maybe two charges, give them a chance, right? If they fail, if they fail enough, they're not gonna use it. The freaking wasp just flying around down there. Got me a little on edge, that's all. Um, but it's just a minor thing like, hey, I'm about to make a check. I'm gonna click my boots together real quick and I'm gonna call a number. And I get it wrong and I fail my check miserably. Yeah! Number 10, I suppose this item in the right hands, or if you hand out too many, can be game breaking because people can then stack them on top of each other and explode, but it is the bag of holding. I almost think this as essential adventuring gear at this point. There's a few items I think of it like, the, like this, but this is this gives players a lot more options. You know I'm about options, and yes, they can store like undead in there or like turn someone to a statue and store them in there, or even get a whole statue in there if you want. But it's just a little way for them to get more stuff out. Like, hey, I want this for my house. Okay, let's find a way to get it in your bag of holding. It's not unlimited space, but it does help with the encumbrance thing if your DM is still using that for whatever reason. All right, there you go. 10 uncommon items that are not gonna break your game. You're welcome. Um, thank you to my patrons. Again, if you, you know, like magic items, go check out our Patreon. Magic items, uh, non-combat pets, Wheel of Fate, uh, feats. We got all sorts of stuff over there. One dollar a month, go check it out. And my five dollar patrons, you know I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out. If you liked what you saw and got what you needed, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Later, Gators.